Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing my favorite iPadOS 17 features and what I consider to be the most useful updates. This new iPad update is available from September, so let's get straight into the video. iPadOS 17 brings the iPhone's lock screen customization features to the iPad. There is a variety of wallpapers in the gallery, including weather and astronomy, kaleidoscopes, color gradients, and some of these even come with their own animations as you swipe between the lock screen and the home screen. I had fun designing my own emoji wallpapers where you can create unique combinations and colors using any set of emojis. There's different filters you can apply to your own photos, and live photos will animate when you wake the iPad. You can either create a wallpaper pair or choose a different appearance for the home screen, and it's easy to set up multiple profiles and switch between them depending on your mood. You can also customize the lock screen date and time with different font styles and any color from the palette. Lock screens can be paired with a focus mode, so you can have lock screens activate focus mode or vice versa. Widgets can now be added to the lock screen. In landscape mode, you have this area for widgets and you can add things like time and date, calendar, upcoming events, battery levels, weather, reminders, and more. The widgets are interactive, so you can tick off reminders directly from the lock screen and open a specific app using the shortcut widget. I like to use my iPad for digital planning, so here I can tap directly into my digital planner in GoodNotes app. In portrait mode, there's a smaller area for widgets, and you can rotate your iPad to see a different set of widgets for each orientation. I found some cute lock screen widgets from third-party apps, and I'm excited to see more apps make use of this feature. Live activities allow you to keep track of things happening in real time directly on the lock screen, such as flight information, food deliveries, and more. Home screen widgets are also interactive. This means you can do things directly from the home screen like play music and podcasts, tick off reminders, and turn on the lights in your home. I look forward to seeing more third-party apps build this interactivity into their widgets. iPadOS 17 also gives you more freedom to position each widget where you want, as previously you had to fill up the home screen in a certain order going from the top down. You can create your own stickers using any images and photos, and apply different effects to them. These are added to your stickers drawer, which can be accessed from the emoji keyboard, and this means you can use them in lots of places, including messages, note-taking, and other apps, and even when you're marking up a screenshot. You can also create animated stickers from live photos and send them in a message. New sticker packs can be added from third-party apps, and syncing with iCloud means you can use your stickers drawer across the iPhone, iPad, and Mac devices. Links are now possible within the Notes app, and you can link to another note or to a website. This is convenient for quickly jumping between related notes, and when you're creating a link, you can simply start typing the title of the note, and all the relevant notes will show up for you to choose from. You can now work with PDF files directly in the Notes app. Here, I've drag and dropped my PDF digital planner into the app, and the hyperlinked buttons and tabs are fully functional, which allows me to quickly navigate around the file. You can annotate by handwriting using the Apple Pencil, and drag and drop images from places like your photo album. There's a thumbnails view which shows you more pages, and from here you can copy and paste any page to duplicate it, rearrange pages, or delete them. I love digital planning, and GoodNotes app is what I normally use. However, with these new features in Notes app, I could actually use my digital planner in here. It definitely isn't as easy to use as GoodNotes, and you can't put text boxes anywhere you like, but the basic functionality is there for working with PDFs. There's also a new magnifier tool, and you can highlight text on PDFs. You can also collaborate with others and see updates in real time. The new autofill feature helps you to populate PDF fields using saved information from your contacts, like names and addresses. Stage Manager was introduced in iPadOS 16, and now there's more flexibility in how the windows can be resized and repositioned. Previously, you could resize and move the windows, but they sort of snapped into predetermined places, and it just made the whole experience feel rather clunky iPadOS 17 improves the multitasking experience by giving you more freedom to set up your layout exactly the way you want, and everything just feels a lot more fluid now. You can shift-click app icons to instantly add windows to your workspace, and it even remembers the sizing of a window that you previously had open. In settings, a new tab has also been added for multitasking and gestures, and here you can enable the feature to take screenshots with a finger swipe. 
In addition to the interactive widgets, Reminders app now lets you create sections and you can drag and drop items into each section. There's a new columns view and this makes it possible to visualize your tasks into the various stages of a process similar to a Kanban board. You can also create grocery lists and items will be automatically sorted into categories to make shopping easier. The Freeform app features new drawing tools, including a watercolor brush, calligraphy pen, highlighter, and a ruler, and you can hand draw things and have it automatically snap into perfect shapes. Follow Along allows you to collaborate with others and see what they're working on as they move around the infinite canvas. iPadOS 17 brings the health app to the iPad and you can keep track of things like your daily mood, menstrual cycle, health symptoms, and medication. You can now create different Safari profiles and keep your browsing separate, such as for work and personal or for different users. Spotlight search is improved and smarter, and you can do things like toggle a setting on and off directly from the search bar. You can now use an external camera for FaceTime and video calls on the iPad, which is useful if you're connected to an external display with its own built-in camera. Within messages, you have a new catch-up arrow that lets you jump to the first message you haven't seen, and you can swipe right on any message to reply. Anyways, let me know in the comments what you think about iPadOS 17. Do you think the new features are useful and which one is your favorite? I hope you found the video helpful and don't forget to subscribe for more iPad tips and tutorials. Check out my other videos in the meantime and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.